Hey y'all, I know Fly on the Wall is about to start. I'm sorry for interrupting you. I just wanted to remind you that if you are in New York City on October 25th, you need to come see me and Ben on our first ever show. Fly on the Wall is going live. It's the podcast on steroids and it's coming to a stage in New York. So buy your tickets ASAP before they sell out. And now let's get started with the show. <laughs> is a mess. Come on in. <laughs> You're listening to Fly on the Wallin podcast. I'm your neighborhood friendly black girl Amber and I'm the best white person in the world, Ben. <laughs> We'll fix it in post. And I am so, so, so excited to be joining y'all today with two people we greatly admire who Icons. definitely have oh. their lives way more together than us. Please welcome we? to the say. seated stage, Kev and Melissa on stage. Thank you for Thank you. It's debatable how together our, our lives are, okay? Y'all yeah. are very together. Well, oh, that's how you, you present. We yeah. present. Presentation's one thing. It's so funny when we make a video <laughs> and our robot's just like... <laughs> <laughs> the whole pile. This part is now clean. Correct. <laughs> you went too far left. <laughs> Come back on over. You know what? If you left the pile in there, that's another yeah, source of engagement. Really though. That is true. That's that true. is true. like, oh my god, I have the same pile. No. I bought that pile of Amazon Legit. too. It's been there for two weeks. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> oh my gosh! How did we even get y'all here? Because y'all are big busy, right? We wanted to be here. Yes. Yay. I think Good. when it boils down to, I, I, we love you guys. I as a couple, fans. as creators, as parents. So when Melissa's like, oh, we're doing Amherst Podcast, I was like, oh, great. Fantastic. <laughs> you know? Let's do it. Because listen, there's a lot of stuff I don't want to do that mm. I do. Mm. <laughs> so when I get to do something that I want to do, yes. it's like, great. Fantastic. It Let's balances out it. the stuff I don't want to do. Yeah. But today's been a lot of good things I, yeah, I wanted great. to do. So it's been good. I um, love hitting people with that. I'm so busy. And I'm yeah. at home eating ramen. That's yeah. busy though. <laughs> Yeah, I have struggled way, with that. The way Amber eats ramen, it's a busy <laughs> hot mess. There's like noodles in her hair by the end of the time. Did now listen, you, like, I get you it. Are, you're a ramen monster. I, I do love it. ramen. Yeah. How do you eat ramen. your ramen? Because these are the things that matter. Yes. I lo so I love a green... It's exactly how they make it with all the fixings. Oh, I, I, I like the onions. I like the mushrooms. I like the egg. The I like the pork the belly. The extra shashu. The broth. Yeah, if they tell extra, me that broth has extra. been sitting back there a month. Give it yeah, to and me. then throw an extra protein yeah, in there. Yeah. Because, you know, growing up, ramen wasn't like that. No. I'm no. not sure if y'all remember. I, top ramen, ramen is so... Top ramen. It didn't even click for me. That's what they were... The noodles we were eating. Yes. It's that didn't same. even click. That's yeah, what they that, were coming for. No. It's so different yes. done in its real form that I didn't even make the connection... Until we went to Japan. It's going to sound like a flex. It's not. It's, it's, it's and the guy was like, I want to make a poor. Not. Yeah, he was like, I'm making a poor version of this. And I was like, oh, my God. Ramen. Yes. <laughs> poor black people been on that Japanese food for a long time. <laughs> with hot dogs with shrimp yep. and cheese exactly. and, and egg and hot sauce. That's how I, we used to eat it as kids. Yeah. I don't know how poor y'all was. <laughs> when I hear a ramen, I think of virginity, video games, and poverty. <laughs> like, like, that's <laughs> what... I associate my life when I was eating ramen. Ramen was the second Sex. thing I learned. Probably the thing I've made the most still to this day. I don't think there would be anything that I could catch up to that I cook myself. I learned to make eggs, and then ramen was the second thing. Spaghetti got to be on the list. No, no, no. <laughs> you all you knew how to make for years was eggs from ramen. probably six to <laughs> spaghetti was too 14. hard because you never knew how to make the al dente yeah <laughs> I, we weren't even going for that bit the noodles are you done you never threw it not. on the cabinet it was like okay no, we're not playing. that's playing with your food if my mom saw that that's now a wasted noodle go to bed Oh, man. I love that you said that it was ages basically like six to 14 15 yes. because what age did y'all meet again we met at 16. 16, turning 17. So I think there's a clear reason why you stopped eating just eggs. He started coming ramen. to my house for breakfast in the morning. Her mom made oh, hot breakfast. Oh, you were Hakeem and Moesha. 1,000%. Yeah. <laughs> I felt this seen when I This is why I make breakfast all the time. Is it? Yeah. So does his girlfriend can come? Um, y'all so cute. Yeah, and y'all still got the so I, would, I see it. I actually almost answered for you when you asked them when they met. I was like, I was about to say sixteen. It was eleven. <laughs> yes. yes. While we're we were thinking about, we were. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I I know this. Uh, the reason I know this is they are as long as 
y'all are also influencers, but you're also a New York Times bestseller. Like, Isn't that crazy? Talk yeah. about flex. Like, that come sounds on, like, so weird for Japan it to be true. Yeah. Yeah. So weird Forget to about true. Japan. Like, yeah. the flex is you're a New York Times NYT, New York That's crazy. Times. That's real influence in the pages. That is That's incredible. Uh, so Marriage Be Hard, and then sort of the themes of this book, you also have your podcast on it, which is relationship-focused yep. as well. And um, was, I want to jump into our first, like, influencer uh, section, hashtag influence. We talk about influencer. Uh, for me, though, I think y'all are... Um, influencer in a sense that you're not peddling products. Mm. Uh, you're actually peddling um, ideas that makes people's marriage uh, healthier. And you have a way of, in this book, truncating like these like boring psychological relationship books or whatever down to these like wonderful like, here's what you can do. Yeah. Uh, Make it digestible. I, I feel really... And, and so it's you have actually given me some really great ammo to throw at Amber yes! when she's not doing right. And so one of my favorite <laughs> oh, chapters... This this, this is book. why we did this. I know. This is right. <laughs> I think this is what you wanted to do. One of my favorite things. Defeat the women in our lives. It's, it's, everybody yes, relax. Because it's everybody so relax. hard to do. Like, we're losing all the time. We're never going to win the war, but we can get a battle. A battle. I, Listen, Here and there, mm -mm. even just if I can push the battle on my side, <laughs> maybe I'll lose the battle. But maybe there was a moment I was winning. <laughs> I love at that. Some a point, reprie, we're like, oh snap! He kind of got like, me wow. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. just a little <laughs> bit. It's a good just a little bit. Um, one of my favorite chapters is fighting be hard. Uh, mm -hmm. That is like, I is that the best chapter in the book? Like, Ooh. do you think? I, I don't know. Like, when you people know... come to you, I feel like that's the most actionable kind of things you put. I love it. I don't know. We actually honestly get the almost every chapter yeah, just from people minutes. because I think people read the book and it's reflective of where they are. Mm. So sometimes it's fighting, sometimes communication, parenting, sex. Those are probably the four that yeah. are and the I most. I personally get the, the love letter one a okay. lot, the love letter chapter a lot. Yeah. Uh. So I think those are probably, those four or five are like the most. But fighting is, comes up a lot fighting. because. You're in the top three. Yeah. People don't often uh, essentially you either are copying your parents or what you see in tv even without knowing what you yeah. see on tv and movies is your version of fighting right and Zeus a lot of networks time. slowly destroying the <laughs> black community <laughs> you can't say that we can say that but you can't say you can't say that i'm sorry everyone will watch the zeus and i'm just like why are we watching this baddies west i, I want to fight you now baddies west <laughs> I know. We all have that one show. For we sure. We got to. For sure. It's I have a belief that reality TV is best consumed when it makes you feel better than the person. Yes. You're like, hoarders, like, your house is dirty, <laughs> but it's not hoarders dirty. Correct. Like, I'm watching hoarders when my house is a mess, and I'm just like, well, look we don't at, have look dead at cats. That. I'm not that bad. They have dead cats in the freezer. No. That's, a, that's Cat, way worse I than remember me. that episode. <laughs> And the therapist was like, I want everyone at home to be very patient with our with our hoarder. Yeah. Because I already know the letters are... She's like, I can smell the letters flying in right now Hilarious. about these damn cats. Yeah. I did keep my first hamster in the freezer for about two months. Okay. I couldn't say goodbye to him. I was you know, six years old. His name was Hampy. So. This is why people watch us. <laughs> because of what you said. They, they watch our relationship, but they're like, well, we ain't that bad. <laughs> We we didn't keep hamsters in this. The it's fascinating. Did you, did you really do this? Yes, I did. Yeah. And it's there was y'all food. Y'all ate was in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Your mama was, didn't know it was in there though. My mom. I think that's my like mom, top three whitest my, things you said. Ben, on I was gonna say that, but I didn't know if it was too far. No, it's not. It's not. He needs to know. <laughs> he needs to know. Uh, ben, don't tell nobody else that. I know this why, podcast going out to the world. Don't tell nobody. That's why else. I win every fight in our house because this. <laughs> That's the logic. You know what I'm saying? Because well, I was fighting with you today, and you brought up something from the book. I did Remember? bring up something. Oh, really? It was about like keep the thing the thing. Yeah, that's, that's the main from thing, thing the main hard. thing. Oh, the main thing. Okay, could you explain just, this concept I just posted to that on Kim's uh, Instagram the other day. Yeah, hilarious. About keep the driveway? About, I don't remember what it was. Should I just be saying stuff? <laughs> Ooh, okay, uh, let me put a pin in the driveway fight. Okay. Oh, it was really? a fight. We was just playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's, you know, like, she's talking about the Instagram uh, thing? Anyway, keep the main thing. The main thing is Chaz been so long since we were, but let me think about it. But in general, it means what you are fighting about, stay on topic and fighting about that. Mm -hmm. Because what we often do is me. I'm the person that does this. Uh, we like to pull in things from the past, from <laughs> what you did 10 years ago. We've been dating a long time. To I got, win? I got a lot of ammunition. <laughs> yes. Right. If I'm losing this I got, battle, oh, full I got files. Of, I got a lot of examples. Correct. You may be right 15. today, but in 06, you did this. <laughs> Correct. Let me remind you of Correct. that. Correct. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so when you're fighting, if you if you keep the main thing, the main thing, you can fight or and and you make your partner not the object of your aggression. Mm-hmm. If we're fighting, uh, I know this couple as an example. I know this couple that was fighting over. Um, online banking so one was trying to do a transfer for example if i'm trying to do a transfer to kev for a hundred dollars whatever and the transfer doesn't go through and he approaches me and now we're fighting at each other when really we should be arguing at the bank Mm. we should band together Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. the bank is the one who messed up the bank is the one who didn't let the transfer go through for whatever their reasons are it didn't but instead we're fighting at each other and now i'm talking about how irresponsible you are and now you're Mm -hmm. talking to me about how Mm -hmm. impulsive i am and now you and now we're talking about other things meanwhile the bandit done got away because it was the bank (laughs) yes and that's often what we do in unscathed Unscathed. like like, for me that's true influencing you because that idea in there is so actionable yeah Yeah. like literally that influenced a a moment in our life today where i'm like hey you're bringing up that i don't brush my teeth enough where we're talking about (laughs) flushing the toilet or something like that you know what i mean like you're like you know that i don't that what was the situation i know exactly what happened today so i was editing something so I was like hey can you go hang out with Wild for a second and he starts reading a book and I see Wild walking off wandering around the house but he's still reading mm-hmm. which is so and, that's a practice I do she'll wander come back and then come back to the reading right like she she can't sit still sorry I interrupted you go but here's what the thing see <laughs> this this is what I be talking about <laughs> what happened was Ben has been wanting to homeschool Wild when she gets older Oh, I see. And I just feel like that can't happen for a number of reasons. I need you working with me. I, mm. your attention span mm. is, and so that was a perfect example of me saying like, and this is why we not homeschool. <laughs> oh, I see. You don't have classroom yeah. management. Yeah. You don't have said, classroom management. Said, I don't have classroom management, yeah. and I'm like, no, I'm a Montessori kind of teacher. Ah, ah, so it's wandering that, that it's allowed to happen, and that, that was a good, my that story was, was not, great. But not only was she wandering, she had almost she had grabbed something. She has figured out how to take the wall plugs out. Oh. So she had grabbed something, taken the wall plug out, and was about to put something in the socket. So I was like, oh, let me finish editing. And I was like, and and if I'm not here, how are we going to homeschool? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My baby would have been up and stuck <laughs> with, with vaults. She would have been turning electro. <laughs> she would have been Now your baby's a superhero. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I was like, I can't keep, in, in that situation, g- give me what you would say. How could, should I have kept the main thing the main thing without calling to question the we keep wanting to homeschool and this is another reason why this won't work. That's good. That is good. Do you have something? Well, the way Amber's mind works is exactly how our minds work. Right. Especially when you want a thing to be a thing or not be a thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So inherently, I believe we all do this. Right. If you don't want that to happen, you kind of already start searching for points confirmation bias it. confirmation bias right so in that moment ben's not thinking about this is a homeschooling moment he's just like i'm reading she does her own vibe we got our own thing and maybe he's unaware like our kids they would surprise us when they could do something new like when our kids could take that stuff out we're like okay dang mm-hmm. now that's something i got to be aware of right so but it's it's so easy to be like this is exactly what i'm talking about because in your vision this is the worst case scenario you're trying to avoid but in his vision he's not seeing that happening right now he's just reading this is our time it kind of always goes like that so keep the main thing the main thing where you hey ben are you keeping an eye on her because what she's about to do is dangerous that's actually all that's happening in that moment it's not actually it's reflective. Other stuff happening too though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not this, but you're right but you're right reflective of her teaching and that's ben takes that same energy into the teaching but what you're really saying about homeschooling is i have a fear that if we do this i'm going to be alone and I'm going to have to do more work. And I really need your help. That's what you're actually saying. That's what I was going to say yeah. is there might be two things happening here. The first thing is my fa- personal favorite chapter in the book is the parenting chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, it is one of the most, um, it w- and it's what Kev said earlier, it's the chapter that was the most reflective for us in real time. Mm-hmm. We went into, I've said this before, we went into this chapter, I kid you not, thinking we did such a phenomenal oh, job. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
<laughs> that chapter was for us first. Yes. Yeah. We thought we did. I could hear it in your voices. I, I read it and listened to it. Yes. So you could hear oh, yeah. some shaky parts where you're like. Yeah. And I was like. Oh, can you just explain how the Audible <laughs> is set up in the book real quick? And then I want to get back. So oh, that... yes. If you listen to the audiobook, which you definitely should. I, I it, it, Whenever an author reads a book, I have to. It, it brings the. It, Tony Same. Morrison, you know. I was like, you're mm-hmm. alive again. And so in the book, they go back and forth reading. Mm-hmm. And when parts are emotional, you can you can really hear and connect with the emotion yeah. and you could hear that in the parenting be hard chapter especially when you talked more about like race relations with your boys yes. which is mm-hmm. a very real fear oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, but yes the parenting yeah. be hard um, so we went into the chapter fully thinking that we when the kids were young we took turns Okay, Mm -hmm. I did this. He did this on this night. We had a schedule. Present father. Oh, look at us. I miss remembering. Oh, yeah. Come on. Look at you know. Look at us being the beacon (laughs) (laughs) in the game of parenthood. This is the chapter that we have arrived. And as we get, we had a ghostwriter. As we get to writing, and she's asking us all of these questions, things start slowly unraveling. Yeah. And by slowly, I mean very quickly. Uh, (laughs) They start to unravel because you start realizing, oh. This is where this started and the effects of it we're still experiencing today. (laughs) Oh, the reason why you operate like this and I operate like that. And this is why we're still doing this dance now. It started at this moment. And so all of that starts happening in like it was literally at this point we were like, so therapy. Mm-hmm. You think mm-hmm. that might be a thing we should do now? Because I think this is this is the chapter. Right <laughs> yes, this and we and we had a, a, a head. Yeah, literally, there's a moment where I think in the book where Kev <laughs> says, uh, "Quote something, get out of my car." That happened ten years ago. That where was crazy. you said, "Get out of my car" to him. You had a car, and there's this moment where I, for me, it was an unlock where our relationship just carries on, right? Like, especially we're yeah. together. There are things that Amber had been doing for eight years that I just realized yesterday that bothered me. Yes. yes. You know what I mean? And 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 to see someone who I think is being successful doing that is is really nice. Yes. And the important we need thing. Y'all's mistake. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we're doing. Kev says it all the time. All we're trying to do is say, hey, girl, there's some poop right there. Don't slip there. <laughs> we are not looking at the people often – our relationship gurus, they their approach is we are at the mountaintop. We will guide you up. We are climbing the same mountain as you are, and we're just like Amber. Don't grab that part. Just that, I, just that part, right? Just because yeah. we just did that, and it was it looks strong, but it's loose. Yeah. Put your hand right there. Yeah. Okay, good. Now you tell me where I like. We're all growing together. We're just sharing as we learn. We don't have this down. So right. to speak, you know what I'm saying? Really quick, so I just let me finish this whole okay, thought. Cool. Yeah. The, the thing I was going to say <laughs> is, um, just as a nugget, I don't know how it'll land, so I'm just going to mm, say nice. it because it was one of the, literally one of the parts that, uh, again, the parenting chapter for us that was the most kind of like impactful is being careful not to police each other's parenting mm-hmm. because then it affects how you end up um having your relationship with your child, if I feel like you're parenting me, parenting her. Does that make sense? Yes. And so it's really important to allow Ben and allow Amber to parent. I'm not saying put the baby in danger, obviously, but allow the parenting style to be what it is because your child will have an appreciation for my mom taught me this, but my dad taught me this. And those things are okay. You know what I mean? One thousand percent. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or and to have a dance and a conversation around. Uh, Kevin is very um, freely <laughs> giving to the boys. You, I, I, my oldest is just now driving. If I, if it Kev pained buy, you to say that, I saw. I you fixed saw it. it. You fixed it because yeah. I saw this it come out. They were like <laughs> freely. This is if, a struggle. If altruistic could with buy the boys. Isaiah. A BMW, what year are we in? 2023, the 2024s are probably out. If you can buy him a 2024 BMW no, 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 today. No, let's, let's go to Germany. Okay. <laughs> Get it off the line. I want to see it come down the factory. Come on. We were there. Correct. I want my I baby to reset to... it to English. Yes. That's how that's how, exactly. that's how I want that car. Drive it on the auto car before it comes to the 405. Yes. I want the long license plate, and then I want you to shrink it yes. to the USA. From and keep the long one so y'all know. I got the real. I got the real over there. <laughs> Ship it. I flew to Europe and got it flown in. That's Kevin. And I'm very much like, my daddy bought me a 1983 
uh, Honda Accord when I got my first license because that's <laughs> the year I was born. So I also want my kid to have a car the same year that they was born. <laughs> I want to be safe, but ain't no reason you should have a car though, child, if you don't take this hoopty. Right. If you don't take this lemon. Yes. Is it safe? Can it get you to A to B safely? Well, then that's good enough. And that that specific thing okay. is something we did not realize. Was an issue. Like you, Ben, have your own life. And the way you saw the world, the way you saw other kids interact. So when you had an idea for a child, you had your own vision. So did Amber. A lot of times, we as parents ha never have that conversation. Never have those conversations. Right. Of like, you know, when you have a baby, you don't think when they get their first car, should it be a hoopty? Should it be a kind of okay car? Should it be a car of the year? At, early in our relationship, it was never going to be a choice. It was going to be a hoopty because Correct. our money wasn't right. going to matter. Correct. Yeah, but the money. But before we got to things. that point, oh. we actually, yeah. oh, it doesn't have to be. Like the reason, one of the reasons Melissa's car was a hoopty was by necessity. Right. Her dad couldn't have got her that. But when we were going to the same high school at the same time, I didn't have a car, period. My parents couldn't afford it at all. Her dad got her the car that was like safe and the year was born. What I saw was people, my, one of my friend's dad was retired military. He got him a brand new Toyota Camry the year that it was. Mm -hmm. My other friend's dad, uh, his, his grandpa was a famous Hollywood actor. He got him a 325i. So we're seeing this in our school. And these ain't even a rich school. This is like a military school. So in my mind, I'm like, when I have kids. But I also think it's impactful everything. to know that you didn't have a car. No, I that's, that's what it's, even, yeah. that's it's the first impact. It's mm. those two things yeah. together. Not only did I not have a car, what I I didn't desire your dad's piece of crap car that you don't had to use that. your feet. Don't do that. That's what I desire for my it's, that's completely it's giving Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> like that's who wrote it. <laughs> so, but we never had that conversation. Yeah. So yeah. when the time is coming, I'm like, oh, we get my baby. The thing, because I've always wanted that. And she's like, we get my baby this what my dad This was a therapy did. session. Yes. For sure. I could totally And it was yeah, like, understand. oh, we've never had this conversation. College. Melissa, we believe you got to go. You just have to. I'm like, college is dumb and a waste of money unless you're going to be a doctor or a technical skill, mm. engineer, lawyer, Ooh. something where you have to learn. If you ain't doing that or you're not sure, don't go. And now that you could work for me in the family business, that's right. what I want to build. Yeah. But listen, so another conversation we didn't have because it wasn't necessary because when the kids were born, you was going to college because that was the right. only way to get a good job. But then we went to college and it didn't get me a good job. Yeah. So I know 20 years later, it's going to be less of that. Another conversation we didn't have. And that's just two people seeing the world differently. If we were single parents, this ain't a conversation. They would have got 83 if it was her alone and he would have got a Maserati if it was me alone. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but policing the parent. You needed thing. the input of both, and but that's I think that's the homeschooling issue. For yeah. Us. yeah, because Absolutely. I wasn't. I went to public school. I was like, right. no, you gotta learn how to get Were it out the mud at the lunch table. I was. Yes, yeah, for about eight years. And so, there you go. And that's I think so. Then the conversation has to be about the value system. That's yeah. what I realized with Kevin and I. We're not talking. The car mm -hmm. becomes the object of a conversation about value. College becomes an object about a, a conversation about our value systems to make it clear. My value system is you're 18 years old. College offers you time management. It offers you responsibility. It offers you the opportunity to explore life as an adult on training wheels because we're still going to be there as a safety net. I know this is where the being conversation comes in. I know Kev is not going to manage the kids. They're going to be at the house earning a paycheck but doing nothing. <laughs> that's true and, yes and that bothers me yeah that's, yeah. that's they're gonna be on want, payroll <laughs> yes they're gonna be on payroll but doing nothing not putting in the work right i don't want to raise young black men in this world that don't understand responsibility and you want nepo babies yeah like you're what? and i'm here you for think, nepo you think diddy son <laughs> is I, going to work in and out yes <laughs> that baby I, is doing a poor version I of his dad's job i'm here for nepo I'm just here for the hard work as well. Right. Just and the hard work, work doesn't have to look like our hard work. You're not starting from the bottom because we've done the yeah. legwork to have you not yeah. start at the bottom. However, you also are not what we are. You're not. So I'm going to need you to learn a thing or two about time management, about getting up on time, about turning in your work on time, about putting gas in your car. And it's your responsibility with your debit card, not the money I put. I need you to understand those things. And I feel like college offer. So now we have to have a conversation about this is what college means to me. Right. It's not college. This is what having this car means to me. This is what it represents. Yes. Okay. Once we're off. No, I'm going to have a 2022. No, I, she needs he needs to have a 1983. Then we're having a conversation. So the compromise is this because. 
because it, uh, it allows both of us to accomplish a goal that satisfies the value system that this object represents. That was a lot, but did it make no, sense? No, it does. It, it, it makes it a lot of sense. There's always these underlying things, Absolutely. right? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. like Amber wanted me to dress nicer for the podcast, and I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want this material, right? Yeah. Okay, why? Why don't you want this material? Oh, because growing up, maybe my parents didn't always have enough clothes. There was one time where I really wanted this specific Pokemon shirt, and I grew up in a very churchy. You know, you talk about. Mm-hmm church Mm -hmm. and my parents were against pokemon because it was demonic and so there were things where i wasn't (laughs) able to get close yeah yeah. i just connect with that so much my parents don't understand what pokemon mean demon in in (laughs) greek i'm like what (laughs) demon demon pokemon (laughs) demon (laughs) demon so like so like you're like oh there was like i wasn't allowed to express myself with clothes so now I'm like averse to that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yes, of course. We're also being homeschooled. I didn't have. I didn't get bullied for wearing, you know, stupid shoes or anything. I wore. We I- gotta bring bullying back. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. We do. So <laughs> we gotta so bring shame I love, back. I do. I do love that. Um, <laughs> but, I, and I, but three of my best high school friends stood in my wedding. So school yeah. to me meant. Friendships, yep. heartbreak, yes. social, first dance. That's what Girl, is. what you wearing? Yes. Thanks. I'm finding my style now. So, so yes, college. I, I, I so feel you in that regard. And well. that's but the thing ab- about the beauty of it is when you can find the balance, you make more well-rounded children. You really yeah. do because they get the best of each of you. Like mm-hmm. I feel like <clears throat> I'm like, forget that job. We're gonna be creative. Reach for the stars. I feel like college is gonna make you want to get a job and work. And like that's only gonna lead you so far. Right. <clears throat> but to Melissa's earlier point, we grew up from abject poverty, poverty. So I'm like that hustle mentality. Mm. Our kids cannot have it the way we had it because yeah. their their starting points, not the same. But um, back to the college point, I believe we want to like what you want is the best versions of your school experience yes. on your child. Right. Yep. And that's what Melissa wants. The best versions of college. What we learned. You want that. And actually, when you said it at that time, I was like. Mm. You're like, oh, I'm yes. Gonna, so or maybe just like I, specialized training. Yeah, I've heard it before, but education. I only when you when I hear college, I didn't hear that. I hear wasted money. You sit them there. You still right. what you're doing. You're trying to figure out your life. That's a waste of money. But you know what I'm saying? That part, especially with our kids, you know, you want to go. But at the same time, the crazy thing about kids is our children are so different. Oh my god, you they are so different. If I wasn't their father, I wouldn't believe they're related. <laughs> they are Both that each other yes because yes. like my youngest son i think he could leave high school and go get a job yeah and get an apartment and live his life he wouldn't need college in the way you need that he but from a child he's been on a responsible it. he child. wakes yes. himself that baby <laughs> this child sets an alarm to go to bed oh. in case he's like in case i'm up he's playing a game man. And I he's, and I'm he is too late. Eighty-five years old. He no yes. no alarm. We never have to wake this child up. He wakes up himself, makes his own breakfast, feeds the dog, wow. picks up the poop. Our oldest son. To hey school. Oh, that's <laughs> right. It is okay. <laughs> now let me take a forty-minute shower. He he can't move quickly. Oh. He just cannot move quickly. So I think some kids will excel with college, like my youngest son. And my oldest son might not excel in that way because his skill set doesn't lend he's itself to that creative. thing. He's very creative, right? But his creativity is through the roof. Yeah, he's a very so when he he's feels an artist, it, so he needs to be with you. He's yeah. an artist, and maybe Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, Isaiah. That's can, nice because at least you could be like, "Well, yeah. I get this one. You got that." Yeah, one. and you know what's funny about that? And I don't want to dominate the conversation, but I know no. we spend a lot of time on our children. No, I, lo- I love this. We're learning. <laughs> I mean, this is because we only got the one. This so is our like, segment, Imperfect Parent. We're yeah, we moved in. Okay, Imperfect Parent. Yeah, I think what I found so interesting about children two things one they get parts of your personality but it's turned to the max Mm -hmm. and and so much of their personality is defined way earlier than i thought yeah Mm. like our little our youngest son he's a melancholy molly but he started (laughs) off that way Mm -hmm. he used to be before he could talk he's just no i don't want to he we used to say he used to turn off you go to give him a hug and he's like no (laughs) and it would stand in the corner put him in soccer wouldn't go in the game would practice they be like, all right, Jojo, your turn. I don't want to play. There's so much of his personality to this day at 15, about to be 16 next month. 15. 15. 15 about to turn 15. It's exactly the same way. Our oldest son, free, loving, physical touch. I can give him a kiss more than anybody in the family. Yes. He's just, that's, but that's part of me. I'm a very loving, physical person. 
I, if I give Melissa a kiss too long, she's like, okay, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Our youngest yes. son All is right. that times 20. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, don't kiss me or hug me. Yeah. Let's just dap. Oh, wow. I know. But. And you respect like, that too. Yeah. I respect that. I, I hate it. Respect it. But Melissa's <laughs> also quality time. So he also has that part of her turn to the max. He's like, hey, we haven't watched a movie as a family together. Let's sit and watch this movie. Hey, we say we're going to the movies. Are we actually like he makes sure we're at dinner. Hey, everybody's on their phones. Let's get off our phones. Oh, my God. The gosh. same kid who's like, don't hug me is like, don't hug me, but sit next to me and watch this yeah. movie and let's go to ice cream. Wait, I like, still want I love. And I, still want I want lo- it manifested. Yeah, I want it my but, way. Oh. Don't yeah. touch me. Sit close, though. Tell me <laughs> yeah, how to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. So, but that's part of our personalities turned all the way up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I think the work ethic part we both have. They both have in their own. Yeah. Our, our youngest son probably could go to the military and be a general because the regiment is great for him. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we yeah. told him we're going to get a dog. Some kids love structure. And some yeah. kids are like, this is too restricted. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. so funny because our parents growing up were like, I'm just going to raise y'all all the same way. Mm-hmm. Maybe in some ways they tailored our different needs, but I have two younger siblings and we're very different too. And, mm-hmm. and we're all very close, but you know yeah one day Aaron was like I'm pretty sure the earth is flat I'm like it's not (laughs) how were we raised in the same home he's like no no because YouTube I'm like I I have to move to LA I have to move (laughs) give me your phone so I can mess up and me and my sister are like I need the more you watch the more that'll serve you and even my mom she has a PhD she's like where did I go wrong with you like what's happening and we all love him we get along but him with the flat earth theory is crazy yeah I don't he spent he spent a little too much time. I'm like I love science, and so when people spout those kinds of ideas, which I think are actually dangerous, they they have repercussions that involve people rejecting certain medication, and you know I remember it's a slippery slope. It is. It is. It is is so dangerous. Um, But uh, yeah, you know. So I did want to you you reference the the five love languages Mm -hmm. and quality time. (laughs) You have a great line in the book where you're like. I thought if I didn't have sex and read the five love languages, I would have a great marriage. Like that, it's such a great line. I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is exactly <laughs> it." You're like um, poor Melissa. Next page. <laughs> Let's see how this gonna turn that's out. That's what they That's how it was presented, <laughs> though. Like, you that that was the book that everyone like read this book, and you will have a healthy it's relationship on the New to, New this York day. Times to this bestsellers day. Bestsellers list the week we were on it. Yeah, it really to, is. To this the day. book's 30 yeah. years old. Five love languages. 30 years old. Four agreements. It's a or load five of love shit. Language. Five love languages. Yeah. The it's book is? It's a load yeah. of shit. I remember reading <laughs> Really? It. You think so? I think because it, it here's my you know, thing. I think there are elements of it that are helpful. Yeah. yeah. But as an end all be all, it's too black and white. Like oh, one person having this kind of like preferred love language. I'm like, also there's many different kinds. There's oh, other, there's other love languages. I For me, when people elevate an idea or a, a or a book in this case a book specifically Christ, the christian communities um i i immediately am averse to it i did have to read i went to a, a christian bible school and so that was a book that was on and i i'm a little i think it's helpful in some ways but the fact that i read that and that's all i don't know maybe maybe the culture around the book not necessarily <laughs> no no I, 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 I do remember i do remember parts of it being like you know you find your one like he he yeah. sort of presents that as like find which one and I'm like okay like, like <laughs> let's <laughs> let's hold on. I there. do agree. I used to actually firmly believe that you only had one mm-hmm. uh, love language. I actually believe you can have multiple, and beyond that, like multiple, and they can be tied. Not like mm, this is like yeah. far and above my first and then second. You know, um, but I also believe they can change over time. Yes, and I didn't believe. I don't even be- think that the book presented it. That it's been no, a long time it, since I've read it. Because they say you can learn as a kid, and it'll be the same. Yeah, and I think correct, <clears throat> and I think they change with time as you grow and evolve. Two things. As you grow and evolve, you learn yourself. And so I think that's why they change. And I also think seasons of life allow you to just need this at this moment. If I'm raising kids and my kids are really young, I might need... Um, acts, of acts of service more just because I just really need help. Yes, yeah. at, at this, that's where at I this am moment. in my life yes. right now. Yes. And that's because real. your child is demanding a lot from you. Help me with this. Yes. But as they get older, like our and kids as they, don't demand as they as become, much. yeah, more self sufficient, and, well, and maybe you tie into yourself more. <laughs> it has you realize its own drawbacks, it's something though. Else. <laughs> yeah. What, Tammy? 
when I you... love my kids being big. Yeah. I'm the weird mom. <laughs> I want that. That loves my kids being I used to feel so bad about saying it aloud because every mom is like, and don't it's get me wrong, baby. I do miss my kids being small. There are times like when they talk back and stuff, I'd be like, if you could just go back to not talking. <laughs> yes. That'd be great. But I, I you out of talk. Listen. You okay? so I, 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 I need you to I, shut I up. I think you made man. a video of your, fr- your uh, son's birthday like at the beach. It was just so hard yeah. work. I was like, I get that. Oh, I, I feel that. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see that. Love that, like them telling me what they want, what they need, like their thoughts, like having conversations. I mean, you guys, if you grew up churchy, you understand this. Having conversations with your kids about sexuality mm-hmm. at 14 and 16 when I dare you have yeah. that type of conversation mm-hmm. with, with anyone of adult age when I was their age, forget about it. Mm-hmm. Having thoughts about um, the death penalty and, you know, politics and all. I enjoy watching my kids grow and think mm-hmm. into the people they will eventually be in society. Yeah. I think that is that is actually the gift of parenthood, watching these little people grow into adults that you can like truly be proud of. Like I that excites me too. It's I I'm so it. over taking a stroller to the airport. Listen. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's very ghetto. Like, why, or I, I'm so over just like her actively destroying the room while yeah. I <laughs> pull the clothes. Or like she she'll rip off she'll uh, was your makeup really really nice makeup and just, just be get like, it all over mm-hmm. the floor. I'm just and like ah. we, she broke one of the child locks recently. She ripped off the child lock. This woman is a little hulk. <laughs> like she, well, I think you guys I, prophesied over her life when you, call, you named her wild. I know we did. Know. That's, yeah. on yeah. like yeah. That's on us. That's on us. You didn't name the baby calm. Yeah. We did. Uh, <laughs> baby number two. Number two. Calm. Let's, let's switch <laughs> that. Passive. <laughs> Spoke yeah, there you go. You Quiet. spoke that into her. Oh my god! <laughs> I, mean, we're, we're, I love we're it. Fostering an environment like she goes to this gymnastics thing, and she I showed Amber. She's like hanging yeah, she's on swim, for dear life. Gymnastics, and music, class. falling down. Music ben class. Ben is the kid. And um, <laughs> Dang. yeah, I'm going around. It's so funny uh, because in this book, you uh, well, the reason I love this book. Thank you. I'm just going to keep on talking. About I love it, it. because Thank I you. I think as someone who grew up in church. Um, there's a lot of like black and white. And in the, in this book, this book is very much of like, hey, there's a fluidity. Mm-hmm. And there's this really uh, a heartbreaking moment where um, I think, Kev, you like get fired from your job for lying about it. <laughs> Before you could even warm up the, the chicken breast. Or, anyway, <laughs> I was, was like, I need a sketch you, of this. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> it's very funny. So Kev, Kev gets fired from his job doing something pretty un- unchristian, I have to say. It's like lying. Exactly. Uh, but then, uh, so... You, you become the primary caretaker and at one point you Melissa forces you to like wait in line and go get food stamps right yeah, it's yeah. just like uh, and you're standing there mm-hmm. holding mm-hmm. the hand of your two kids <laughs> Tyler just, Perry like, movie. In, and just like really you know a Tyler Perry movie very right? pursuit of happiness very pursuit of happiness close the door to the bathroom because his cry. pride wouldn't allow it I was like sir if you don't go collect this money <laughs> yeah, absolutely yes. that you done already paid and, in but so the bus w- drove by me even though I drove there the bus drove by me <laughs> so my mind I rode the I bus my bus yes <laughs> I, just, I barely had enough fare it was very much much losing Isaiah, <laughs> <laughs> and my son' name is Isaiah too. That's great. So I mean, there's these like ebbs and flows, and I love about this book that roles and responsibilities shift mm-hmm. and they change, especially in parenting. Yeah. And um, I don't know, that's something that I find and even really, romantic yeah. part. Like, what's interesting about that? We have completely taken over your podcast. No, no, this is why segments. we have this. Okay, okay. great. This we, what, we'll read uh, some letters in a second. Yeah, yeah. So okay. we can, about to, so we can about to take over fix other people's okay. relationships. You're going to fix some other people. No, <laughs> okay. You are not taking over. Well, we're, t- we're, we're talking, but I just want to make sure because, you know, me and Kev will talk. <laughs> no, yeah. I, that's, what we, what, that's why you're I, here. I feel like y'all's time might be a little bit more valuable than ours. So yeah. No, <laughs> equally valuable. I think what, what like, so Melissa and I have been together since we were 16. And that that went from like high school sweethearts with no money to we both got our first job, like first job job, right? I think you had already worked and I had already worked, but like paycheck job. Then we go away to college together. Then we get married. Then we have a kid. Then we have two kids. Then we're like poor with two kids. Then we move here, poor with two kids in a different city. <laughs> and then like things start going well. Then I start traveling like uh, and then things start going really well. All of those stages required a different relationship Mm -hmm. with us, right? Kev Fired is not the same person as Kev on stage touring, selling out. So the version of the wife I needed at Kev Fired was like, 
I my confidence had never been shook it, shook before. Even when I got cut, when you I thought like I was going to go shooken, I never thought I thought I was going to go far in basketball. When I did it, I didn't change who I was as a person. I was just like, oh, this this ain't for me, but something's for me. When I got fired, it was like, oh, you are not good at this, and you can't because at the the time I got fired, we were paying mortgage, our bills were set for two family, two. and Melissa made more than me, but I chipped in heavily. But now you got fired. You got two kids yeah, and a I mortgage. It like that. But go on, go ahead. Tell us, you I chipped in heavily. So I don't. I don't necessarily feel like just a failure as a banker. I feel like as a failure as a husband and a father. Mm -hmm. Like, who am I? Yeah. Like I'm worthless. Why am I here? I'm if she's doing everything, especially yeah. in as a black man, a man period than a black man. I'm supposed to help provide for my family, protect my family. You can't even keep a job. Like, and I only got fired once, but now you can't keep no job. Like, yeah. I started talking about myself for people. All, all of the tropes. <laughs> all the tropes. Not a married single Now parent. he's driving her car is, and stuff. <laughs> so that person I needed for her, I needed from her was different at that time than, say, the person I needed last year. Uh, quality time was a thing we didn't really have to work on early. Because we were always together. Mm -hmm. But now when, you know, this last year and usually seven, eight months out of the year, I'm on the road half the year. So now we get maybe two or three days together. And of those days, one of those days is the podcast, still taking kids to school and all that stuff. So now we got to actively work on quality time when we didn't have to actively work on it. And I think to your point about the five love languages, I think the biggest mistake people make and I made you think just because I love this person, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to automatically fall into place. And it's not like that. You have to work to make sure those things fall into place. And that fall into place is relative to where you are. Five years from now when the boys are gone, gone, and we don't have to drive them to school, it's going to be another thing. Ten years from now when they've been gone for a while, they're not even in the home it's Don't another have to relearn each other then. Yes, yeah. because so much of our life now, I mean, the routine qu kicks in so quickly. I wake up, go to the gym. By the time I come home, Melissa's already cooked breakfast. The boys have their little sandwiches. Our kids go to different school. I take one to one school. She takes one to the other school. Usually, I don't even see her. I come back from the gym. She's already gone. And when she comes back, I'm taking him. We see each other. I get in the shower. She's going to a podcast. Four years, not even four years from now, four months from now, when one can drive. Well, that's out. Then a year from now, when they both can drive, then they're gone. Like we don't even know what we'll need we didn't until need then. The timeline. You're kind of speeding things up. <laughs> I'm just preparing. At least now I know. I love a good timeline. Yeah. But that's yeah. been like 18 years of our life. Right. Yeah. yeah, has been the boys demand the first part of it, getting them to school and from school. Our time for everything is based on Shona. that, and making sure we're home in enough time that they're. And in a few years, that won't be a thing at all. And that's. We've had kids since the second year of our marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So most of our marriage has been children dominated. Absolutely. The next 20 years will not be children dominated. So what adventures we have to learn. I'm excited for y'all. Yeah. yeah, so well, that's why empty nesters. pandemic was hard for everybody, right? Yeah, for Quarantine sure. and be yeah. hard because it disrupted everybody's routine. Sure enough. Man. Like people broke up during that. Oh, that, yeah. that people Panda Express. broke yes. <laughs> up. They're, they're done. Yes. Divorces, Stairs. breakups. They're like, I love you at a certain amount of time. Yes. I ain't got a 24 hour love for you. <laughs> now 24 well, hours a day, I think every day. It, it just exposed the pandemic forced you to look at a pile of laundry that's probably been there for years and years and years and years, but the busyness of life allowed you to keep walking past it. When you're suddenly sitting down, because that's what the pandemic forced all of us to do, is mm -hmm. sit your behind down. <laughs> you look at this pile and your brain is also like, well, I guess now we have the time to discuss that pile of laundry over Can't there. Can't even remember Do whose pile it is. Yeah. It's right. Right. And now we're going through, yeah. right. <laughs> and now we're going through and sorting did. whose is whose and who, you know, what's going yeah. on with what and things, you know, can start to unravel. You find resentment there, you find anger there, like as you're going through it. And that's, that's the, you know, the challenge of marriage is really that checking in to make sure you're sorting through that laundry, if I'm continuing the analogy, mm, continuing nice. the laundry and not allowing one big thing. And now you have this pile because usually that's when people say they've grown apart because it's been sitting there for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to it, it's overwhelming. And now we're looking at you, strangers. You can't even use the clothes anymore because the funk has set so Listen, mm, they don't fit. Into the, my no style fun. has changed. <laughs> yeah, my funk. Like... Yes. Everything is the different. I sweat a lot. Like if I don't <laughs> immediately run 
my little booty running shorts, they're gonna smell. They're gonna stink up literally the whole laundry basket. <laughs> That's no, true. for real though. I have these little. They just soak the little, little Nike hoochie daddies. My yeah. hoochie daddy shorts, and I use them, and I have to wash them. I just I sweat, you know, like a like a water cooler. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's very. Have disgusting. you watched the show Hoochie Daddies? We have not yet. I can't wait though. It's I've I've seen tu- some I good. Can't, I, I hear ooh. Tubi and I'm just like, ooh, like, it's I, a good time. Bad. I have to <laughs> All right, so we, segue to these. Yeah, we got okay, yeah, yeah, This is the I do's and don't uh, okay. Okay. relationship advice, and I'm only doing this because I think the laundry analogy is going to be important. Okay. These are real people. Okay. Real questions. Just we Judy. didn't write these or make yes. them up. We've yes. never done that. Okay. People send these in. <clears throat> IG. All right, you ready for this, Ben? We're going to ask, we're honestly just want to hear what y'all's opinions are on this. All right, here we go. Dear Fly on the Wallin, me and my boyfriend have been together for three years. I'm the oldest of six children with a single mother who worked to take care of all the bills. So I was basically another parent. I made it very clear in the beginning of our relationship that I'm ready to be in my softer era of life. Yes, I'm here to be wife and have these responsibilities, but also I don't want to be the person taking care of everything. Within three years of being together and moving in together, he has moved his mother in Mm -hmm. without my permission. Mm -hmm. His friends are over every day, Mm -hmm. and it seems that if I'm not telling him what needs to be done, it won't be done. His friends and family have literally walked in on me naked. They use my bathroom, or I'm just in PJs chilling, and he sees nothing wrong with this open-door policy. I'm definitely not saying he can't have friends and family over, but I'm someone who enjoys their own space and time. Also, I would like to be notified and communicated about these things. When they're going to happen. Please help. First of all, you read that so well. Woo! Thank you. The inflections in there. You took us on the journey that is the letter. <laughs> I, could, I could visually I, I, see it. I was yeah. getting anxious. Yeah. <laughs> happening. <laughs> I, not the mama. Not the friend seeing yeah, you naked. Yeah. Mama yeah, has moved mama in. Mama moving in. Without permission. They've only been together three years. Well, I don't want to say only. That's a long time for, for the streets. What type of advice y'all give people? Oh, no. Reality. Okay. Go ahead. It, I, go first, so I can. Say I, I, I had appropriate. This is what answer. I would say. <laughs> the, <laughs> this has actually happened to us in business too, so it, it's very fresh. The first thing I would say is this is the perfect time for a very serious, heavy reset of the relationship, the boundaries, the importance of something. This behavior unchecked, it will it will end your relationship. Quick, quickly, because what your mom comes in unannounced without my permission, your friends come in unannounced without my permission quickly turns into you don't care about me at all. And, you don't what I say doesn't matter if you value your space then the other person uh, like I could see easily. I don't know. If this is the case. I could see easily the person who values your space. She said her reason. The other person maybe has six, seven brothers and they were cool. People come into the bathroom like I've had friends who are like, I've seen my sister naked, my brother naked. We come in the bathroom. Other people were like, I, we didn't do that. And it feels very foreign. And a lot of times what we found, people usually not on purpose, they get in relationships and they try to recreate their life in their family, mm-hmm. in their relationship, because it feels comfortable. Dang. 100%. And what is comfortable to you and the way you grew up is not the way that person grew up in our family. But she's also become the second mother in the home, too. Again. Mm-hmm. Yes. And our family, me, me, not Melissa, the family I grew up in, we fussed and were loud and we argued and we never went to bed mad. We would fuss, not cuss, but fuss and fuss. Love you. Good night. Kiss. We never went to bed like that. Melissa's family, she didn't do that. So when we got married, I was like, we going to do things the way my family did. <laughs> yeah, let's fuss all night. Let's and fuss, we love each baby. Other. Yeah, don't that's let like, the sun go down your anger. That's, yeah. that's biblical. That's <laughs> biblical. You don't want to do that. You don't love him. And you don't know his word. And that's what's wrong. Y'all wasn't on the military based church. Y'all wasn't apostolic like we was apostolic. That's like non denominational. Y'all don't love them for real. This is biblical. The way we argue is biblically correct. All right, relax. Certain amount of haughtiness in my thing. I had to learn that regardless of how I grew up and what worked in my family, that did not work in my marriage. And pushing Melissa to argue and talk and talk, let's talk about it. Did not work. And I literally said, Don't let the sun set on your anger. She was like literally these were arguments. Literally. And she was like we need to talk about this in the morning because at this Ooh, point I can't have this conversation. So I remember the first time I was like, okay, we're going to talk about it in the morning. And that morning we came and we had a productive conversation mm-hmm. that we had never been able to have 
when I was pushing for it at night. Shut up, dear. But <laughs> that came from her being like, she didn't say I ain't your family, how you was raised. But that doesn't work for me, which is what I think she, this per, this writer has to tell this person. This is what, even outside of the way she was raised, I didn't sign up for this. And if we're a couple, even if you're a roommate, it's kindness and respect to say somebody's moving in or somebody's coming over. That's not even relationship. That's just common courtesy. Mm-hmm. I'm naked like, hey, come on, man. I'm your wi- wife or girlfriend. Or they girlfriend. didn't say. Girlfriend. They've been dating for three years. Well. You if you definitely if you don't stop it now, you ain't gonna be able to stop it. Yeah, and a lot of times your house anymore. Yeah, I believe it or not, not you can't take it's this. It's not. Shit no, like I really you can't take it to me. I want to say one more thing, and oh, then I'll be yeah, done. Yeah. A lot of times, as crazy as it sounds, people are not aware of what they are doing is as offensive as it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. until they've been told. They just Listen, think. Sorry, can you say that one more time? To <laughs> just look at this direction, please. A lot of times, people are not as a, not even aware of what they're doing is offensive. That's good. Kid. Until they're told. So you you if you don't tell them, they don't realize it's bad. I man spread all the time. To I'm the tall. Point, I'm actually sitting like this because I'm used to sitting next <laughs> to, to Kevin. Over. Yes, and and like taking the up as little space as possible. Right the, worst. <laughs> oh, the worst subway writer. The worst. The worst. Plain. The worst subway. I got a white man on my hand. They love. <laughs> and how tall space. are you? Yes. I'm six like, one. Yeah. yeah, and I'm six one. I'm six one as well. So it's a lot of. If yeah. you don't tell me, I don't even realize yeah, it because I'm just trying to find it. comfort because I I can't sit like this. <laughs> so. I mean, Melissa, she don't even say it no more, but somebody else is like, dang, Kevin. I'm like, oh, my bad. Yeah. It was in the podcast we were yeah, doing. Yeah, literally. Melissa's just accommodated for it. But if you tell me, I'll be more like, oh, my bad. Or I'll try to yeah. readjust. Matter of fact, the day we did it, I was hurting my knees trying try not to be on you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, my, Kev, why you I was literally there? like. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be yeah, uh, I'm like, courteous. I'm like stretching Ouch. Out. I'm like, it my hurts. My foot's in the other camera <laughs> yeah. right over here. <laughs> But my point is, I don't realize I'm doing it right, right, right. until you tell me. And that that behavior shows itself in marriage all the time. You don't realize what you're doing is coming across as controlling, uh, not caring, and if, whatever it is until that person says, because it's really how you, it makes you feel. Another person might not interpret that action that way. Sure. Right. But your partner feels like you're controlling, you're hovering, whatever. Am I helping you, Ben? <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm helping you, Ow! this is great. I, there- there's I like, never want to help Amber. I only am here for the men. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa can like, be. I will do something like not pick up my underwear. And she's like, you hate me. <laughs> you hate me. Like, you hate me. Like, and this, this underwear is, why is an example. You don't value my time, <laughs> yeah. my care, yeah. my art. And I was like, I, I decided to wear my socks inside out today. Yeah. Like, like there's some connections. For sure. That, that show this because is. everything does have a deeper connection. We're never talking about what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. We're he didn't tell you that the cleaner had just left. Yes. And, and so <laughs> I, I closed the door and greet them goodbye for the day. I, I ain't like... even paid the invoice yet. And I'm like, <laughs> All right. why am I seeing your boxes on the floor? <laughs> you oh, they, they ain't even got out. Out you the could wait till she left to put your boxes right <laughs> See, there. Yeah, on the he, floor. he forgot to tell you that part of the story. The what were you going to say about Only the parts that, that are make you look good, yeah. Ben. Uh, <laughs> Leave the rest to her. Yes. Uh, uh, baby girl, this not the man for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. See, yeah, I would you. At what point is it not redeemable anymore? Dang. So, the thing it can't of, be salvaged. I, 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 this isn't, it's not like he's doing something, you know so bad he ain't hitting on you he ain't cheating on you know the things that we're like now girl what we talking about you yeah. need to go on and leave but we are talking about something that's gonna work your nerves from now <laughs> until eternity eternity it from now until eternity that man gonna have his mama brother sister cousin friend best friend her best friend her uncle aunt's daddy brother sister cousin at your house <laughs> sister wife brother husband come on house. <laughs> come yes. on it's gonna be a circle of trust at your house Every single time <laughs> you come home. <laughs> and if that's the fuckers, just what right. he <laughs> likes, enjoys, or considers a way of life, mm. and yours is the exact opposite. Unless you guys can come, which means you got to talk. And half the time, folks don't be talking. So unless you guys can have an actual conversation, agree to something, and stick to it, which is just not likely, you might be wasting your time. Yeah. 
Yeah. You might be wasting. Don't don't let them propose. Don't get no. <laughs> don't, practice, don't, don't practice your name with his last name. <laughs> yes. Don't in, in, in the propose. curse of don't life. Don't allow him to love you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's also one of those things where, like, you know how sometimes our parents love to put their older traditional views on us sometimes, yeah. but in this case the shacking up conversation might have needed to happen. For sure. And again, and we had to have the conversation obviously with my mama because this economy, if you like somebody a little bit, y'all need to move in together. Show enough. Yeah. And we cannot have been right to pay two Come separate you, <laughs> incomes, rents, mortgages. You like, need to God knows my heart yes. every day. Yes. <laughs> I don't know yes. what the rent it's is expensive. was during the Bible days. Okay. <laughs> right. But I see the yes. rent today. I ain't got no shekels. My mama always does that. Y'all like, lived out. They lived like, outside. Your daddy paid my rent and his. I was like, that's not Today. It was also twelve dollars total. It was twelve dollars, and you could put gas in the car for a nickel. Come on, yes. that's not for today. Yes. Not yes. apples to apples. Like your daddy used to fill my tank and his. You and know I'm what? Like, I saw a TikTok, which won, means it's didn't. true. <laughs> I saw a TikTok that was comparing inflation and money in I like the sixties. It was like fifteen k. Yes. Yeah. Yes. With inflation, the cost of it's it's literally not one to one. Mm-hmm. It's not even like it's like. 25 to 1. Yeah, yes. 20, like, 29, I think it was gone up 29 times. Yes. Compared wow. to like yes. our income has only gone up like So if y'all on a second day, three times, bring three you home. Literally. Yes. So the your your, your dad yes. could have worked at McDonald's or a steel mill and that money could have paid his rent and your sure. rent. Now. Or, or a mortgage. Or a mortgage. No, a mortgage. You or a mortgage. rent and save money for a mortgage. Yeah. And mortgage. now you you literally, if you're making $100,000, it's the equivalent of making like 27000 then. Correct. Yeah, we're below yeah. poverty line. So hush, y'all old people. Yes. The it's world has the changed. Yeah. It's not the same. But hush. in this case, maybe I'm like, okay, it's mama and brother and sister uh, contributing to the rent. Yeah. Because it maybe could work. Mama's not contributing. But, no. <laughs> Mama's so late. I brought you in this world. That was my contribution. Mama's, Mama's definitely not contributing. <laughs> not contributing. That's so real. Mama's not okay. contributing. I got and all the good friends one. that's coming over because you know what they do and they play in video games. <laughs> and they oh, eat food out your fridge. Food, your and leftovers they leave go your house to work the next mess. day. <laughs> and when you wake up in the morning, there's dishes in the sink. Yes. And he's not helping. Come on, and there's you know clothes. my boy. You know the situation. You know the situation. And y'all are fussing. And you can't be naked. And, our, and especially after a long day of work, you at home, you yeah. want to relax, you want to chill. And again, the, what I'm saying is y'all got to have a real conversation. Okay? See, I would just double down and make shit real uncomfortable. I would walk out there butt naked, <laughs> blunt in tow, and be like, you in my house. <laughs> so that's that what was. you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's walk in front of the it's screen. Shaking. Yes. It's shaking. Shaking. yes. And if and you're then, uncomfortable, get out. And then, and then look at your <laughs> man. I would have the loudest this sex you, This ever. what you did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and like start this a what you did yeah, with the Sharon Stone yeah, leg yeah. cross. Oh, so, did you see something? So I'm since sorry. we're all yeah. here, here are the bills <laughs> for the month. Yeah, right. <laughs> I would have the loudest sex ever. His mom would be like, "Oh, God. I just live on the street, <laughs> like, like with, with a little pillow." I'd be like, "Oh, bitch!" <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like down the street, like playing basketball. <laughs> I'm not even there. That's just yes, what she just called matter. her vibe. Loud. Then. I would make. <laughs> Did you hear me, Mom? In the in the Did kitchen you, the next you morning. How'd sleep? Like I slept Forrest so Gump. good. Forrest Gump principal. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Your oh, mother. <laughs> cares <laughs> about <laughs> your schooling, boy. I would I would have it like that. I would wild, I would bro. mount you on the kitchen table <laughs> to get them folks out my house. Listen, you know how I am, Ben. Amber is dramatic. I'm like, let's, yeah. how can we make people real? We got to let us get my home. If we're all moving in, guess she, what? Guess we, what? We it's talked about this a couple weeks ago, but she did wake me up out of my sleep. Yes, like to the because I'm like you. Let's fight. Yeah, like it's on oh, my we mind. Need, we need to have this. Con- it was <laughs> I. I locked the downstairs door. I went to sleep, and the g- door leading into the garage. I locked it, and she had to pee really bad. And she mm-hmm. has asked me not to lock that door, and most of the time I don't. But this time I did it. it, it and she woke me up out of my sleep. Yes, because like, he you know, know I'm postpartum. Yeah, so when so you got she, to pee, oh, yeah, you yeah, got but to pee. I'm like Blood I also trash. think murderers. I read a lot of serial killer like right. novels, and I read a lot of horror and, and watch a lot of horror. So I think everyone's a serial killer. Where's right? your I key? Have, I have. It was in, in the back, but you know when you gotta go. That's that's extra time. Have you ever? That was a great. Have you question, ever almost Ms. made it to the bathroom? That was a great. And then you're like, question. I finally made she it. She's asking the point. questions. I asked him not, not to lock the door. She's just asking questions, Amber. <laughs> Don't worry about the key. I asked you we not to do that. We never locked that door. We never locked that door. So never. I was. It's so funny, Ben, that you baffled. said that. I was watching a show today. I didn't even tell you about this. Oh, it ain't gonna be sad, but you're gonna be like, 
you, you got to stop. <laughs> the guy the guy had hopped in his window and he had a baseball bat and he was like, get out of here. And the guy went. I was like, I need a baseball bat. <laughs> I got to have it because I don't want to have to pull a gun on you. Yeah, but a baseball bat, right. it, it, it mm-hmm. sends a it message. It still works. And as the men, you're like, I got to protect my family. I feel it. So the not locking the door, I'm always like, the murderer is coming. Yes. Yeah, they're coming. Like, and he's you can like, lift up ah. that electronic garages are easy to break through. Yes. Like are you they? can you can jam them up there. I tell my kids this all the time. You don't if you don't lock that door and the garage is open, you you my oldest son, you live downstairs. Yeah. This room is downstairs. You're getting murdered right by the yeah. door. R- literally. Your murder is going to wake us up and save the rest of us upstairs. Exactly. <laughs> so you should lock the door yeah. cuz you're the sacrificial lamb, baby. Leave it unlocked. Exactly. It's going to buy us time. But that we didn't have that narrative. We yeah. had that I was sitting in 30 minutes of LA traffic oh. and I was just about to go on myself oh. she, and she, I find I reverse parked had, and she I'm was driving. She had just had a long day. You were in you think you long had, day. An interview. Making money for and our family. And your P only is timed to the best oh, case scenario. Oh, your bladder knows when, girl, you're close enough. No, we're not coming out. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, I made it. <laughs> and you don't have enough for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, the bladder's, yeah, it's, I, it's done. I, we're I, here, I but get, I don't I didn't messed get on content. myself. Yeah. I was yeah. like, well, now you can't sleep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How could you possibly <laughs> that sleep? That is a logical. Let's fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't possibly. But the book, but the, but the book Shameless Slug, has <laughs> yeah, uh, taught me how to fight fair. Oh, wait, I got another good one, Ben. Yeah, we have to, yeah, let's get this other one going. Well, now, I mean, it's good, but it ain't. <laughs> now I feel like we're like, ooh, wait, let's you go. You hack like, it up. It's, it's, it's great. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Fly on the Wallen. I'm 40. My husband is 39. We dated for a year in high school, and then years later, we reconnected on Facebook. Dated, got married very quickly. I had a lot of reservations, but I loved him so much. With all the besides the regular issues, the main one is the lack of sex. From the honeymoon night and on, it's been lackluster. I feel nothing. I've tried tricks, and he's even gotten pills to help, but he doesn't use them. <laughs> My friends say it's his weight. He's a big guy, and he doesn't want to work out or anything. I'm a faithful person, and for once in my life, I'm trying to wait until this marriage and all that, and now I'm sick in a physically loveless marriage. Ooh. Please help. That Sex be hard. Sex be that's hard. A, that's a letter. <laughs> they are married? Yeah, they're married. They're 39 okay. and 40. And I think she was basically saying she waited. She waited till until marriage. Marriage. That's that's marriage. So she waited Very, until she was 39. Point. That's the lie. Mm-hmm. If, I'm assuming the reason you waited is for church reasons, religious region, reasons. Yeah. And I talked about the myths in the book, and that is one of the biggest bamboozlements. There is hoodwinked girl mm-hmm. to th- have you thinking that if you do all these things right, that your sex life in marriage will be, first of all, easy. It's a lie <laughs> that your sex drive is going to be through the roof. It's a lie that you ain't going to have to work for that. Your partner, you and your partner ain't going to have different varying levels of of, of sex drive. It's dry. I hate the word drive. Actually, it's another word, but I can't think of it. But anyway, varying levels of sex. Girl, it's all a lie. It's a lie. Thank you. Yes, I'm yeah, still okay. What's that phrase? It's a high and low, like there's desire. Yes, high desire. desire. Thank like, you. That's are, exactly women, word. women can be high. There are high Her desire. desire. Men. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I, and lackluster and desire lack, men. And lackluster uh, per men. the letter. I wonder if the pills are working because she said he was on pills that he stopped t- taking. So I'm wondering. Well, she said he didn't take them. Yeah, he got them. Yeah, she got Yes. Him. So she's saying, like, I tried all the tricks. I even got him pills, but he doesn't take them. Oh, got it. But he doesn't use them. Uh, that could be pride then. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if he took them, they worked, and then he was just like embarrassed or his pride kicked in and he, you know, men be feeling very much a way about not being able to perform on their own. Um, but he's <laughs> just, if he's just not taking them, that will be a hump he does have to. Oh, he doesn't want the hump. You lobbed it in there. You lobbed it in that joke. I, I was because my mind thinks in jokes only. Yeah. <laughs> Joke is always first. Yeah. What's so, your advice to this woman? How, how desire a woman? So the the underlying problem to this too, especially for her, higher desire women with lower desire men is is not commonly portrayed in the media or something sure. like that. So you end up we get this question a lot because you end up feeling like nobody is like this. Because mm. what you hear is my wife don't give it to me. Blah, blah. Like you hear that in conversations, in church, in media. You yeah. don't hear my husband doesn't want to have sex nearly as often. So we actually got this letter so many times. And women are just like, what? 
is happening. I, I, and they internalize it differently too. I think for men, uh, because it is portrayed so much, it, it, it's all rejection, but I think they understand it and maybe you could speak to it, but like men understand it as like, Oh, I'm just with the lower desire, uh, woman. And that's kind of like status quo, so to speak. And I think for women, you almost feel unattractive. For sure, like maybe your or husband guilty. literally d- guilty, isn't attracted yeah. unattracted to un- me. That's why she said, "I feel yeah. unloved." Unloved, yeah. yeah. Like, and also when you uh, desire something, right? She looked for this and waited for this, and especially if you used it to save yourself, or if you just desired it, and it's not panning out, it feels infinitely worse mm. right yeah. even like food the juice right? wasn't worth the squeeze you're Man. like i've been squeezing the squeezing, yes. squeezing the clothes and you now i waited, the juice. I waited really all this time yeah, for like this 39 it's years it's like food like if your homie just... tells you this restaurant's great Shut it's up. so good it's the, the best <laughs> you're expecting this this just happened to us last week this is the best ever. Oh, it and it was far from our house we happened to be in a part of la that it was close we got it postmates took it home it's going to be the best. When we got home, it was oh. the most bland. I reevaluated the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it was so not well, worth it. Was it one of those like, ah, oh, my friends just broke. That's why they think. No. <laughs> wasn't it even that. wasn't that. It just, maybe it was th- wasn't their day. But it pissed us off so bad. I was like, I don't even trust your judgment as a person. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. I could have had in and out and had a better <laughs> experience. And I don't even love in and out like that. In-N-Out. But imagine that to sex. Like, yeah. she's probably imagine we're going to be having this great sex and blah, blah, blah. And then sometimes I imagine in the guy's head, well, it's, it's not happening. I don't really want to do it. And the more you he thinks that, the more I don't want to do it. It gets into my head even more. If he doesn't feel good about his body or the way he looks or the way he feels sure during sex. I'm sure playing a role. Your mind is your biggest factor in sex. Yeah. What is going on in your mind? is your the biggest hurdle to overcome if you feel sexy first in your mind like oh girl you're looking good you're feeling good you're smelling good yeah. ah, 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 then it's easy to portray outward if the exact opposite is happening in your mind that's a huge hurdle to overcome or if to you're not sexy. thinking let me see your laptop amber one thing i've learned about my wife is the same thing because i used to internalize every not sex is something i've done wrong my wife is a, a as hard of a worker as i am if she's in the bed Oh, right. Just <laughs> if she's <laughs> emails, I got emails. I'm so behind. She's thinking about these emails all day. She's in the bed at 10:59. Okay, I got this. And what do you think about this date? Blah blah. blah. Okay, I'm done. That coochie is done. <laughs> <laughs> the coochie's also done because you nobody can go from that. Like, okay, now what did you say? <laughs> That's we. I'm not we thinking did. about that. So in my marriage, in my mind, I it's used to big. always be like, well, dang, that like, you don't want to have sex, you don't love me, blah, blah, blah. But if we're hanging, <laughs> chilling, watching a movie, we're snuggling, now that, that coochie might not be done. Might not be done. Right? But I think in my mind, every time we didn't have sex is because of something I did. Yeah. I'm not thinking like, you got to be in the mood or the openness mm. to the mood. And to go from work to sex, or I'm tired, or the laundry, or I didn't cook, or I didn't take a shower, like that's part of learning your partner, right? So, and I and feel for this woman feeling like, well, if I the, the thing that I that I, that stung me is like I did the tricks, that's like I done my part. Now it must be me. But can I say this too? Please, the please. other thing is, she can't own his sexuality. Yeah, that is something he has to work out whether that's therapy whether that's pills whether that's mm. whatever the underlying yeah. issue buy him the is. pills and being like eh? yeah <laughs> that, that, that might not work no yeah. it's not gonna yes. work he has to own and feel empowered about his sexuality and work through whatever is going on whether it maybe it is his way maybe he feels unattractive maybe he feels like whatever i don't want to have sex with my sh- i don't want to take my shirt off yes yeah. whatever mm. that is then he has to work that maybe he needs sex therapy maybe he need, doesn't like whatever it is he has to work that out and you doing it for him is not going to produce the results that you want it's actually going to make push him further away because you're owning yours and now you're trying to own his and and now what i'm doing is really for you and it's not for me and that was the big thing like you can't 
um, he can't. Oh, he can't have sex for you. You yeah. have two individual people, and and sex was invented by God for the pleasure of both parties. Mm-hmm. I need to have my own pleasure, my own sexual experience that's separate, different, and apart from yours. And if you are trying to place what you want on me, well, then it is no longer for me. Yeah, right. So I need to feel comfortable owning my what? T- what are my accelerators? What are my brakes? What are my turn ons? What are my turn offs? If I'm into work mode and I know my husband wants them, then maybe I need to put the computer away because now is the time for me to huh? put it away. <laughs> In addition, I want to just hop on this because you're making a fantastic oh, point. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> that was very helpful for me because I was her in the like. If you don't want to have sex, I've done something wrong. So let me try but, to fix you. Right. And purity culture, we both grew up in the church, but purity culture had a very different and almost polar opposite effect. Melissa took it as I must protect myself. I must never have sex and therefore God will bless me and I will be blah, blah, blah. That entrenches your mind in a totally different way than you think it does. It actually locks you in, not opens you up. I was like, I... Actually, I'm not pure. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm actually dirty. I'm dirty. dirty. I'm gonna have sex. I'm, I don't <laughs> because I didn't I'm feel filthy. that same yeah. shame, right? I, my pastors and preachers, purity was like a wink. You know, y'all got to be saved. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, God yeah, yeah. Women, Especially with the men of the church. What? They would they yeah. would separate the girls and the guys. Yeah. And it's and our, always our had many bullet points. The guys were like, you know, just do what y'all got. Yeah, do. you. I made my about mis- yeah. friend who was the drummer. Yes, uh, and God, you, y'all oh, read this God. book for Come real. On, yeah, yeah, we love Most it. people yeah, have two little points. They know y'all got a point in every <laughs> well, chapter. So actually, Amber and I previous we had a podcast where we read a book a, a pr- pretty much a week, a mm-hmm. book a week. So like we are practice, but yeah, tell if you wouldn't mind sharing that. Story no, no. So my book. boy was the drummer in church. Him and another girl in the church had sex and got pregnant. Right? They both are attending the same church, both in ministries. She. Got sat down. Sat down. We all know what that. Sat means. down mm-hmm. means you can't. If you don't know, it means you can't Scarlet do nothing. Letter. Scarlet yeah. letter. Your For stomach getting bigger. Times Square. You yes. can't do nothing. Yes. While that stomach is there, and when you do it, you can work in children's church when you're born, when the baby's born. He never missed a beat. Yep. Literally. literally. <laughs> yes. Never missed a beat. He's been a really good drummer. He was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but she was also amazing what she did. Yeah. We yes. also valued the music more. Sure, yeah. That's so true. Valued you're a bass more. player, which I didn't I'm know. I'm a bass player awesome. too. <laughs> 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 like so, too. and when you see that happen, you're like, I mean, well, you, when guys have sex, we don't, that, that yeah, shame and that's guilt that's is not nearly the same. Yeah. So it doesn't, when I had sex before marriage, I felt bad, but not the same way the girls in our church felt bad. And the reward for virginity was so high. The, the Melissa was striving for it. Other people in our church were not. But she was like, I'm going to win this and be the best at this. And give and give my sexual sexuality to my husband. Yes. And not own it myself. Did you get a purity? Did you have a purity no, ring? Oh, I wasn't never, that deep in it. It was invisible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but maybe that was like the white evangelicals, you know? Yeah. They oh, absolutely. Because so, they were they black were folks ain't got no money for no jewelry. <laughs> that's <right>. <laughs> <laughs> that, that ring married is to Jesus, you married yeah. to Jesus, but hey, you ain't gonna yeah. wear nothing. Yes. But like, just think about practically. It's like nobody ever thought about. If you deny or deny, deny, and deny yourself for twenty years, why would it make sense that on the twenty-first year you're now just open and free? Mm. Right. That, but that kid who's been exploring their body doesn't see a little Cinemax. Done flick the bean or, or jacked and jilled. They are having sexual experiences. They're going to be more prepared right. for a healthy sexual relationship. Both come with a different set of problems, but uh, but no. Correct. Well, that's what I was going to say. That comes with a different set of problems, but sexually they they're further along the line. They are, but they're also they're further along. Awakening. Long. Yeah, but so I I and I say this too. I don't think the church meant no harm. No. The people were really trying to protect us from sure. unplanned pregnancies and those pitfalls because that also happened as well. These in these effects were unintended, yeah. but they were still there. They were so the the intention versus the impact. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of our wild. parents went through the negative version. Yes, so their experience. They're like, let me help you with what I went through. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to save you. They don't necessarily know that this is going to create another problem, and even that problem. Oh, your purity met my mind for sex. To our parents, but you ain't got no baby. You can get a good job. You can go to college. Like, you get a baby, you can't go to college. You know what I'm saying? They're trying yeah. to protect us and set us up for success. So I think me and Melissa joke about this. 
We don't know what our kids are going to go to therapy on us for. <laughs> we think we're doing a good job. They listen to this podcast like, I, I'll give you I'll some give ideas. You. Yes. But every parent, for the most part, thinks they're doing a good job. A better job than the last yeah. year. Yeah. Because our parents' generation really was the, like, if you told a job you were pregnant, you were fired. Like, yeah. it wasn't mm-hmm. a discrimination act and things like that. I also think sometimes, now that we've been together a long time, just a little bit of honesty goes a long way. Like, yeah. <laughs> like we'll definitely try something and be like, you know what? That wasn't it. <laughs> yeah, I love you, but that wasn't it. Because I would do the same thing with food, with movies. We yeah, would discuss just, any other thing, and oh, it yeah. isn't. Is it? Is it wasn't a you? Or it wasn't a me. We tried X new trick, and, and that was and not it. it. L- you know what? I that oh, listen, level of conversation. To allow, it is a blessing to have a conversation <laughs> like that, and either one of you not walk away thinking. I know we said it was this third thing, but I actually feel like what you said it was me. What a I mean, <laughs> yes. what a blessing you have. It took I me really, a long yeah. time to get in the mindset of like every sexual experience doesn't I, I equate it to food because it's easy to understand. Yes. Everyone doesn't have to be a five star dining experience. Right. <laughs> Some we me and Melissa eat out a lot. <laughs> Once a week, sometimes twice a week. But we also cook at home and sometimes we go we order Chick fil A. When you're hungry, sometimes Chick-fil-A cool. Right. And in the marriage, you're going to have your, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> the, three, <laughs> the three Michelin star. <laughs> your, your three Michelin star. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes you're just like, ha, ha, good night. And sometimes you want, you, I know like, we said we want cool. to have sex. It's just let me give, <laughs> let me handy you off. Because it's all I got is a handy. Yes. And that's the in and out. Or yeah, even that, it's like you have to sometimes redefine like what is sex to you. For sure. Yes. Because it's like, it doesn't have to be penetration every single time. It really does Like with this couple, if he's struggling with his weight, I would be like, okay, sir, that's cool. We got some toys here so that yeah. I can at least get so mine. It blew my mind. So I would call marriage be hard. It, it leans towards like more religious. You're, you're sure. God-fearing. Yeah, you're Christians. Yeah, yeah. You had to, you've been in the church. And when you talked about masturbation in a positive way in this book, that blew my fucking mind. I read, <laughs> I read a book growing up called Every Young Man's Battle. This book I fucked. Remember, I, do you remember this book, right? This book we fucked were assigned with my mind. I think I've read every uh, yep, woman. Yeah, woman you probably read every I think it was, uh, but it wasn't young. It must be a series. It yeah. must be yes. a series. They're, they're, they were killing it. They're like, oh. I think I've movie. read it's either every married woman's battle <laughs> or every <laughs> woman's battle yeah. or something and, like that. And there, they oh. had a section, a chapter on masturbation, and I felt guilty every time I got a heart on as a kid or every time <laughs> I mastered. I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had to go shower. I had to go pray. I had to go yeah. read scripture. I felt, oh, Ben, tell them the story about uh, the girl you fantasized about. No! And, and, you, and, you, no. and he apologized to this girl at his oh, church. No. Ben, are you, are, are you crazy? <laughs> are you crazy? He, he Why would you her. bring her into this? Like, I just want you to know that I thought of you <laughs> in, in, in impure ways, and I'm sorry. Just from, from fantasizing about her. I was so Christian. You were deep. <laughs> You were in deep. He's like, I can't believe I. What did you say? Like, I thought I thought of my sister in Christ this way. That was this. She was like, okay. What does she do with that information, Ben? What can she do with that? I was homeschooled. Which like, and and that's why Wow is going like, down to the school. Your argument. Like, no, I don't need to hear that. Man, yeah, that's she, what she's, I, yeah, how old? See, how old I went to church too, but I would have been like, describe it. Tell me what happened. Describe in, uh, it. Fantasy. Actually, uh, can we go to? Uh, <laughs> you actually want to do it? Was I wearing family bathroom? Yeah. Can we go to the family. Have bathroom you always been it? very um, like comfortable in your sexuality? No, I would say I I've always been. I, I now know things that I did as a young child. I'm like, why am I always hanging out by the dryer? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like things will happen. I'm like, okay. I, I have language for it now. Yeah, yeah. But I would definitely. Ever get out that dryer. You ain't doing no club. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. My mom's like, like make sure. let's assign the weekly chores. Aaron, laundry. I was like, no, I'll do laundry. I'll do laundry and dishes. I'll do laundry and dishes. I need that dryer, mom. Please. Don't take She's this like, from okay. me, mom. Don't take this dryer from me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I loved that dryer. <laughs> and so I would do things like that. Okay. Or I had I had a, a boyfriend every year of high school. Mm. So my parents, they were like Southern Baptists. Mm. But it, and we went to vacation Bible school and all of those things. But, but Democrats. But, they, but, you know, my mom mm. would make a pitcher of margaritas on Sunday. Like, they Got were... It. 
they believed Got it. and they had a relationship with God and we all went to church, but it was like, you know, this is what I actually think of when I think of Baptist. So you're yes. describing it correctly. Literally. Yes. Baptist and then in college, I was yeah. like, black Southern college was when I discovered, I was like, oh, women are supposed to be coming too. Tell me more, professor. <laughs> like I took like, you know, sex Sexual, education yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. So I think from there, I was like, no more. Years of like just giving my high school boyfriend a blowjob and then going home sad. I, I've been told now that we That's too why you don't like can mess. Maybe. <laughs> I don't dislike them. I no, just no, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss later. Yeah, we'll put a check mark. On I don't dislike. I just don't love them. Yeah, like they're fine. They're cool <laughs> because you're not getting something in return, right? Yeah. I like that you like them. Yeah, you know, you do something in the bedroom. Sure. You're like, I'm not wild about this thing. Yeah, but it's it's great that you love it. I love that you love it, Correct. and I'll do it because you love it. But if you didn't love it, we would never do this. <laughs> And it's with like that, that knowledge, like I can't do, I can't do that now. Like, no, we can you, do it. It's fine. No, no, I can't though. Like I literally. But you know, like, you have a food that you guilty. crave. Yeah, yeah, I love sushi. Yeah. Ben's yeah. like, I, I, I know, sushi. but I, I, I enjoy sushi. But there's like Amber hates bananas. Like she's not a fan of bananas. No. I can't. I don't buy really buy bananas. I buy them now for the wild. But like I can't. I will never order a dessert with bananas. So like you knowing that you're not crazy about it. Like you know, I get. But I eat it. It's like it's <laughs> Italian food. Literally. I do it. But I eat it. Oh. Ooh, that brings me to a great question. Before the show started, yes. I showed y'all a video online yes. of yes. this married couple. I thought we were going to have time for this. I will put it in episode notes. Um, this will be because we did talk about the book. Okay. I put it in episode notes. So we saw this video of this couple. Mm -hmm. And basically the video says like a marriage secret. We don't say no in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Initial thoughts. Do you want me to go first? Child, somebody's lying. <laughs> 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 that was not my initial thought, but I think that's a good initial thought. I can't imagine, maybe this is just because it's my relationship. To me, a, a good, healthy relationship, you should always be saying yes, no, maybe. To food, to vacations, to clothing, to sex. Thumb up, thumb, thumb, up, thumb, thumb down, down, thumb in, thumb out. No thumb <laughs> on the rim. Don't poke. <laughs> um, if you're not saying no, you are accepting something that you don't enjoy. And are you guys... Ha well, unless... Finish your whole thought. Okay. Uh, you're like, I have so many For example, <laughs> right? Uh, pegging. Let's just start with pegging because most... Let's just jump in. Let's jump into pegging. Five margaritas. <laughs> If that's not something you've done, if we, we're following this line, uh, line of thinking and Melissa's like, hey, how's your day? We're pegging tonight. Can't say no. Lube up. Wait a sec. I don't know if I'm comfortable yeah. with this. I don't I think, think I've never thing. done this. Huh? You're in line yeah. with what I was going Yeah. Say. I don't know that I will like this. Um, as, a, as a cis hetero man, I've got to wrap my mind around this first. I can't imagine you could just jump into something you've never done without saying no, without a conversation. I personally, me, Kevin, wouldn't think that's healthy, as healthy as, first of all, let me clarify, whatever works for y'all works for y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about for everybody else who will try to apply what works for somebody else. In my experience, what's much better is, hey, I'm interested in this. Me, me and Melissa in the book have red, yellow, green. Yes, uh, the brakes and the accelerator. Yes, mm -hmm. we green read. is something I can do, no problem. Anytime you try that, I'm never going to have an issue with that. Yellow something I might be okay with. Depending, let's have a conversation. Red is a hard stop. I'm not comfortable with this. Things that are red can become yellow. Yellow can become red, red, green, whatever. But I think having those conversations outside of the bedroom, because you don't want to do it right now while you're in the throes of passion, um, <laughs> trying to try new stuff that a person might not like. Also, I think a lot of times in marriage, in relationships, People have prior sexual experiences and they have stuff they've seen done in media, whether it's movies or porn or whatever the thing is. And I think sometimes they internalize that and try to bring that in without checking with yeah. that other person and making sure that's okay. That's a form of colonialism is just doing And whatever. wouldn't you know? <laughs> I would know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. everybody. <laughs> This is my like people. Term, this though. is what we do. Yes. And uh, this, this is like literally I'm stepping in. You're going to do this. And it's not necessarily like it. Uh, I think this is colonialism light because a lot of colonialism, it's so insidious. It's so like secretive. Like yeah. you're going to do this thing and it's going to be fun. It's going to be pleasurable. We're, you're going to 
change this kind of food. You're going to adopt this language. You're going to adopt this religion mm-hmm. this kind of way. And it's I'm not killing you. I'm not destroying you. But you can't say no. And it's there's an insidious nature to it, especially yeah. when it has to do with sex because sex is um, is so like focused on like pleasure and excitement and and yeah. fun. And so you can't say no to that, obviously. Right? Yeah. And I think that's why it, that that video is so um, disturbing. Yeah. And you see the comments and people are like, oh, I'm, I should try this with my person. And I'm and like, I, I just want to say one more thing. Let me say one more thing. In my experience in, in, in our sexual relationship, what has brought about the most pleasure is safety oh, and comfort. Stop saying the word so I can okay. say the word. <laughs> I just want to make sure I said because I, I I I think even me I can fall victim to what I could what I wanted to bring in what I thought was going to be great and what has been more pleasurable is having those conversations and freedom and um Are you saying all the words well, you I said no go on say I'm just a man and you saying all the words freedom comfort acceptance removing also removing expectation. I used to be big on if, if she don't come, I have failed. That means every time we have sex. I think you should go with that. Line. Yeah. <laughs> but <kidding>. sometimes <laughs> you do your best. It don't go there. Yeah. And now you're just, you're licking, you're licking, you're licking. <laughs> it's red. It's overstimulated. You got to pause. <laughs> you done lick, you done suck, you done sped up, pulled back. Vaginas are harder. They, you got to, yeah. and they're not the same. They're not. Let me tell you what sucks, man. When you try to eat out. Upright. And your your three <laughs> your three moves ain't you you done did them three times it ain't worked okay. I'm going back I don't throw an interception of the coach Evan <laughs> Evan in the back turned his mic off but no oh, but yeah, I you can say whatever you want this is this what, is explicitly this is the family rated. podcast but what, yes, but our family yes what I find more than because what I think the goal is if you never say no you're free to do anything right but I think. Your safety, whatever your anything is relative to your relationship. Mm -hmm. And that might not even be the same experience to experience, right? Uh, Pre um, the week before your period, your nipples are sore. I might enjoy getting my titties sucked. Whatever. Yeah. No, no, but I see people on Twitter saying that. It's common. I'm just saying not everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So even if you do enjoy it, I might not enjoy it today. Right? Right? So... Oh, actually, my nipples are a little sore. Not today. And then pre-baby or post-baby, you yeah. might feel differently. Yes. You Listen, so much of marriage and relationship is navigation. Day-to-day, experience-to-experience. So I think it's much more dangerous than it is helpful to just say, blanket, we don't say no in the bedroom. Because, listen... We, we we did the love hour. We talked a lot up to sex experts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Sex has a wider range than I was aware of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of <laughs> things that people can be into. Where your no, you might be surprised at what no is. When you introduce kinks and toys and pain. And others. <laughs> and others. You, you probably could say no. <laughs> we'll talk offline. Yeah, we'll talk offline. There's a moment. There's a moment. <laughs> So you really got to have that conversation right. because me and Melissa are, are, are sometimes feel very different on sex. You talk about fire, clamps, stabbing, like Convertibles people. is my favorite. Bro. Used for There's a lot of stuff people can it be will, into. Now you stop. Mm-hmm. So uh, that uh, long way of saying, I think it's much better, safer, healthier, and eventually more pleasurable to have conversations about what you want, what you're interested, what you're open to, than to just have a blanket. I don't say no, but do whatever you do. You ain't my partner. The I would just want to I want to <laughs> ditto everything Kev said, and I just want to add that the dangerous part about them saying that is that I don't I didn't see the caption, but there's not context. Mm. So have you guys been married for twenty years? Yeah. Do I now know your reds, your yellows, oh, and your greens yeah. kind of implicitly because we've been together for so long? Uh, so and in so that I, case, if that might it's be okay at that point. Right. Yes. So now I actually understand what your breaks are, what your reds are, what, and so I just yeah. don't do them. Yeah. So it's so much easier to say yes because yeah. within the and, scope, exactly. Yes. Yep. And so and guess without, who doesn't read the caption? Nobody. The oh. All the internet. <laughs> all the people. Context. All, all the absolutely people. Absolutely not. And it's unfair. Right. So then you have people who are either naive, maybe they're struggling sexually, and they see this as a goal. 
and they don't have context of how these people got there. Yeah. Right. That's unfair and it's dangerous because if I'm a young person and I'm newly married and maybe I am, you know, one of us is churchy and I'm struggling and now I come in, well, this couple, because that couple goes who I aspire yeah. to be like, come yes. on and look at all the great stuff they put on the internet and they said yeah. they don't say no. So what we need to do is not say no, which is code for you need to not say no to, to me. me. Girl, you talking good. That it's unfair and it's dangerous and that breeds um, an unsafe environment. And because your brain is your biggest organ in sex, listen to me clearly, people. It is. <laughs> if I think you're going to do something that's going to violate my boundary sexually, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. I feel if unsafe, it was once I, wet, I it's un- dry. <laughs> yes, extra dry. If it was once tingly, it's shut off. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is over because now it you is. violated. I'm no longer there. I can Not no longer engage. It. I'm no. It's, and then we can't even do life together, girl. Because you you violated it's me a wrap. here. And I was just gonna make that point to Melissa's point to your point to <laughs> now mine and maybe Ben's later. If I, if I can't trust you in the bedroom, then can I trust you? Yeah. If you don't value me and what I say is important to me here, then are you going to make me feel safe there? And scat play. That's doo-doo. <laughs> Some people that, do oh, they that. I you that on yeah. the love hour. <laughs> yeah, I said, what you mean? Scat, like animal scat? Yeah. Goody Howard told us some folks is into scat. They are. Uh, wet, wet play. Wet play. <laughs> People like being pit. Pee stinks. Ain't my thing. Yeah. I'm not here to to, to yuck Ain't y'all Ain't gonna yuck y'all young. young. But, if you but like still, it, listen. I y'all love, love it, it like for it, y'all. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I but, love it for you. But, but that's but what you know to that. Like, if I don't like that, I yeah, you were saying I can't say no to that now? Exactly. exactly. This idea And of, listen. Your, I, and we've when you're even married, gone, you own each other. We've so gone crazy like idea. very extreme, but there are, you know, certain sectors of the Christian community who might think oral oral sex is uncomfortable. It, yeah, or a sin is yeah. a sin, and you cannot do. So you heard if you if God so wanted me to suck that, well, now I want to do it. If more. God <laughs> wanted me to suck that, He wouldn't have gave me teeth. So right. if that's where you, you suck come from, you can't yeah. just put that Pops on me. That that soup. that's a process. Yeah. And yes. again, that's my mind. I can't be thinking I'm committing a sin against God. Trying, to, girl, bye. Right. <laughs> and well, I think it's even more complicated because within the church environment, you are taught not to say no to your husband. So your husband now wants oral sex, but now you think oral sex is wrong. So now it puts you in this weird predicament and, and then they also didn't met- tell you don't tell your husband no submit and if you don't do it somebody else will yeah. so now you got those three pressures in All in the better with you in life. and that's why it goes back to the comment of you have to own your sexuality that's a journey listen it's a journey i have to take that's a journey that you have to take to get there that's all mind work yes yeah. that's all my work to change your mind about I can have a sexual experience. That's not anti-God. I can do this and that's okay because guess what? Who created sex? <laughs> what of the two sexes, of the two genders, I don't Me. know which one is PC, <laughs> but I think it's gender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Of the two genders, which one has a clitoris? Whose sole purpose? Well, it's a little blurred these days. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but a little pee. I should little say <laughs> what I should say is um you say clitoris, yeah. Okay, the very good. Okay, very the good. The clitoris is great. The point that I'm making is the, <laughs> the whole clitoris soul, is great. <laughs> the sole purpose of the clitoris is pleasure. Yes. It literally serves it don't no even pee. other yeah. purpose. It no, don't it, pee. It, it, ser- it, don't even it pee. serves yeah. no other purpose. So as women, I've gotten a little bit more specific, but as women, if you've grown up in this environment and you're struggling with that, that's why you have to go through that mind shift. That's mm-hmm. why you have to read the books, find a sex therapist, do the mm-hmm. things to help you change your mind. So then when you go into the bedroom, cut off the lights, girl, you're free. Free. Yeah. You can't have that type of freedom <laughs> when your mind is stuck and 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 don't compound that spouse by saying I have to say yes to everything and now I'm uncomfortable and I'm doing girl yeah. this is a, a this is disaster. <laughs> I want to add something to what you're saying disaster. for sex too it, along the lines but a little different. Mm. I, I've been in the gym lifting weights again, right? And this is just for people who like that we had so many good sexes in a row and then this was a bad one. I've been lifting weights. So many what? Good sexes in a row and then a bad one. Or we haven't had a good win in a while. Some days you just don't got it Mm -hmm. strength wise. Like I can rep 185 pretty easily now. I just jumped up to 205. But a couple weeks ago I went in there. I don't know why. Just 185 felt like a million Mm. pounds. Yeah. And I'm just, you know what I mean? Blockage, yeah. Blockage. I'm hungry. There's a myriad of reasons why. 
it, I don't feel strong. And then some days I'm in there like I could probably throw up 300 pounds today. I just feel that strong. Just feeling it. Apply that to other parts of your marriage, sex specifically. Some days you just ain't got it. Some days it just won't work. And you just got to chalk it up to the game. It just ain't my Charge dead. It. Charge it. Charge it, fam. I like chalk it up to the game. Chalk it up to the like game. I we've been saying chalk. chalk. Yeah. We, yeah. Like community. <laughs> because a lot of times you, at least me, I would just get in my head. I'm, I'm not a bad partner. She's going to feel unsatisfied, whatever, and, and own her sexuality. And there's so many other reasons. Anything could be on her mind or my mind or whatever. And just... Let it go. Let it be. You'll, there'll be other sexes. There'll be other days. But sometimes we internalize that stuff like this woman uh, prior to this thing. That with the lackluster. Yeah. Like, and just let it be. Like, let it go. Mm. It ain't just, ah, good night. Love you. The sex is so much better when both people own the 100%. sexuality, too. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. It's not on that's, me to carry your sexuality, yes. too. That is a, that's a great note to end it on. Yes. I mean, I say own your own sexuality. Own your own sexuality. This comedian had a very funny joke, and I, I know we got to close. No, no, we got good, to close. <laughs> he, he said, listen. Child, it's seven. You it's realize seven. we way beyond the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Said, okay. <laughs> he said, my job is to give you a hard pee. You tell me how you want it applied. <laughs> yes. I love if that. If I could stay, if you want me to stay still, keep it here, you want me to pump, you Wait, want me well, I missed the setup. I'm sorry. We were talking about own your own sexuality. Yeah. He was like, oh, oh, let me give you the full context. He was like, women get on men for not, this is just his, he was making a joke. Who's the he? The comedian who said this. I missed that part. Okay, okay. it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yo, you ain't you ain't doing me right. He's like, that ain't my job. Uh -huh. My job is to you learn your body yes, and correct. tell me how to employ, tell deploy me. the hard yeah. pee. Correct. Deploy, <laughs> deploy the hard pee, but you like got to own world, your yeah. part. Yeah. I don't know how to deploy the Listen, I can tell you, um, <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you how to handy me because I can handy me. Right. When I'm alone in a room, I go helmet, helmet. <laughs> here, here. Helmet, helmet. <laughs> but if you can't, if you don't know helmet, helmet, shaft, shaft, then I can't expect you to just right. go in there blind and dark. Oh and it ain't even your pain. You don't know what's feeling yeah. good. Hey, you know. right there, right there. Okay, no, no, too much, too hard. So yes, I'm you have to Talk. direct. Tell me, man. And you can't get in your feelings when I direct. I don't feel what's yep. over there. Yep. I'm just doing motions, trying stuff. Helmet, helmet. Helmet, 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 helmet. shaft, shaft. Rub it, rub, tug it, tug. <laughs> but tell me. And I think, again, back to my earlier point, a lot of times in media, you don't you don't hear that talking. No, not at all. That's what that They've post edited that out. Yeah. They edited that, that out. Yeah, no, no, no conversation. No, Nobody's no saying, and it's, if, if it is, it's either a joke or say right there, it's, it's <laughs> like it's in media that's not based Real. in reality. Yeah. Yeah. It's based in fantasy. In a real relationship, the same way you, Melissa makes dinner, she hand me a plate, she think it might be a little too salty, she, taste that, is that too salty? Yeah, it is. Dang it, I knew it was, I gotta tell her, if I'm like, no, it's fine, then she's like, I don't think it's I fine. you're lying yeah. to me. Yes, that, that I can tell by loaf, your right? face. That chicken chicken meatloaf! Meat does not, you gotta talk her. We you told to, her, and she, ain't, the chicken meatloaf has never come back. But it's <laughs> unfair to yourself, it. don't do it. I'm, I'm gonna just tell you twice. Just one more time. It's unfair to yourself <laughs> and to your partner to not speak and almost i could say it's unfair to, to not know and expect them to know Ooh, they need to think on that so play with yourselves friends I that was the that. outro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on on shelfie we talk about the books that we love uh marriage be hard is the book that we read uh these are the wonderful authors wow. kev and melissa frederick listen to uh, it too if you yeah if you, if can. you listen to it so it's, it's much better consumed audio <laughs> yeah i agree have y'all gone back and listened to it uh, we did um, like directly after I feel like we did. And then, honestly, after we were done, I needed a break. It was yes. such a yeah. huge undertaking. I've read the book like, like 15 times and yeah. listened to it like you're three. You're reading it. You're reading every editing. chapter. Then every chapter comes. I've read it so many times and lived it. So it'd be interesting to go back now. Yeah. A year removed. Are, and are, you, are you working on book number two? No. I, okay. I love that answer. Okay. I'm not at the moment. No. Yeah. yeah. I but mean, not so that you, it's not a possibility. There are but I ideas. Think, oh, I think we that you I, will write something I, together. To me, I would think of this like an album. Like mm. you need that's 20 years of marriage almost. Yeah. Well, definitely 20 years together. We would need to have some more lived experience to, to give you a good. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Because yeah. you know people love writing a book when they've been together five Six years. Months. Uh, <laughs> Six I, months. I tell, uh, I, my pet peeve is when people our age write memoirs. I'm like, 
What are you doing? Or, or marriage relationship. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. My memoir is coming out September 2020. No, no. <laughs> Please. I want it's it more ish. Uh, up yes. to this point. No you can, uh, unless you went through something very traumatic in your childhood Wait, you or serious? something, but yes. Yeah. Oh, you're coming out with a memoir. Yeah, but it's, it's not a memoir. It's though. not a memoir. That's why I said it's a, a memoir, memoir should be okay, closer to the funny. twilight. You're yes. funny. <laughs> but comedians can get away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're writing comedy. Yes. You're writing or, comedy. or if you're talking give it industry insights, That's but yeah, yeah. just when it's life stories and you're twenty six, I'm done. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. You, because in and couples years, have written books together, no. and then you're like, well, y'all are divorced now, so do I get a refund? One of my favorite... Okay, we really got in. One of my <laughs> favorite <laughs> things is watching young people and young married people give relationship advice, because I love... I never say it aloud. Keep living, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is us. <laughs> you, you, no, what well, we read and say what we would do, but no, yes. No, 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 but I'm talking about two, three years married. Oh, and this is like and you're almost in like your a early twenty way, yes. like yes. yes, like TED Talk. They're yes. giving a TED Talk. On oh, marriage. and giving kid more. advice when yes. their kid is our age. <laughs> yes. And then you just watch it tell slowly. Me. Be like, Ooh. please tell me more. <laughs> yes, please do. Ooh, that's and I and and then and and then let's circle back when you've got some life experience when. You didn't used to like avocados, and now you love them. Th this is a small <laughs> change that happens in your life. <laughs> and that's representative of all the changes you're going to go through in your marriage. Okay? Because you're living, and yeah. you're changing, and you're evolving. And part of the reason, I say this all the time, that I say, listen, we got married young, so who are me to say this? My son looking at We ain't writing a book, though. My, my, our son's looking like he wants to marry his little girlfriend because y'all got married young. So oh, I don't want to be. Oh, yes. God. Unintended effect. That's yes. a whole Oh, other my God. We God. Say, hey, we boy, you, you are not. We, you doing, you We're putting stuff exception, on us. You're not us. You're We're you're doing exception. stuff we didn't say. Y'all yeah. well, got married in high school. No, we did it. We're the exception. Don't make us the rule. But wow. one of the things oh, I, no. I literally had this conversation with him and I'm like, the reason why it's so dangerous to get married so young is because you don't even know you. You don't. Because you really don't have enough life experience to truly know even who you are. Life experience. T oh, I think I'm such a great communicator. And I just feel Man. like I hate when we go to bed angry because, of course, I grew up that way. That's what I think. And then I get married and I'm like, actually, I will cuss you out right now. Right. And Let so, me go and hit so this that I honor real my quick. marriage. Mm -hmm. Hit this satin. Quick. And I honor God. We got to go to bed. We have to go we to bed. Because go I'm going to say something so, unforgivable. Correct. So let I me think about it. Let me, Beth, the tongue. Let me sit on Randall. it for a little bit. <laughs> like, seriously. Then you, come on, Beth and Randall. So then you learn yourself. Life experience teaches you oh i thought i would act this way but in reality i thought i liked this personality but in reality oh i thought i was gonna but in reality life teaches you that when you're 20 years old baby it's all theoretical and you yeah. also at that age at every age we think we know everything Shana. yes because at 20 boy i thought i knew everything and i was just getting started being dumb <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have to end. All right, all right, we're done, we're done, Let's we're done. Me started and being Kev, oh my God. me and Kev are never guests. And so, it's so we just threw I up on you guys. That. I love it. No, y'all okay. said six twenty. We were like, yeah, y'all, y'all sure. need to, y'all need to read this book. Marriage be hard. Uh, again, thank you this time. Sure. <laughs> yeah, wow, that is a wrap. We had a good so time. Thank listening. you all. Thank you. <laughs> those of you out there. Time. That was his oh, yeah. You know them from TikTok, cause those laughs keep you coming, cause they're wildin' all the time. Before Wild throws a tantrum, listen to our silly anthem, cause they're wildin' all the time. Don't swap why Amber squats and does a dance to 